Hello and welcome back. Uh, today I'll be doing a small short video about uh, why I'm not doing anything else right now. And the reason is my soldering station, which I like very much, uh, broke down. And it broke down quite badly and it made quite a show of it, giving off some very loud popping noises and lots of smoke. And uh, if you can see this here, uh, this here is the uh, hot air unit and uh, this here is the heating element or what's left of it and huh, this one actually quit in a blaze of glory um, and while it was uh, giving its last final lightning bolt um, it also took out some of the uh, electronics on the board, uh, which is basically there um, to protect the board and uh, and the electronics if something like this happens. And uh, there's this uh, power resistor in here, which is 1.2 ohms, um, which is actually there to protect um, the electronics, just like a fuse. Um, but they're using a resistor because this is a uh, a super slow blow fuse. Um, the backside is that once this thing really blows, it puts out quite a lot of smoke and it sounds like something really breaks. Um, I've already uh, done the replacement of the of the resistor um, and I've got a brand new heating element here I'm going to fit that. It's a different heating element than the one that was in there so uh, it was probably improved at some point in time and uh, once I'm done with that I hope that I'm able to get on with uh, doing some of these here uh, because I have to do two or three uh, reflows or reballs and uh, without a soldering station it's just um, very hard to do. Um, I quite like this soldering station because uh, when you use one like this uh, you can actually uh, use these um, uh, these large air, air nozzles um, which are large enough, oh, this is so original, which are large enough um, to actually take off pretty big BGA chips and uh, the main benefit is the soldering station itself is um, pretty cheap too. Uh, when I got mine it was already broken. Um, there were some plastic standoffs in the back here. Uh, all of them were broken and uh, I replaced them with uh, with steel PCB standoffs and it's been working fine for the last I don't know four years or so so I really like it you have to buy some uh, air filters once in a while because uh, the soldering station also has a uh, a solder fume uh, remover this is all very nice, especially if you're doing uh, reballs. It, it's almost better than than having a uh, an air removal uh, box nearby because it takes can, takes care of almost all of the fumes. So I'll be soldering down the the uh, resistor and uh, I'll be cutting that one off, remounting uh, the board. I'm pretty sure that nothing else was damaged because everything else on the on the board looks fine. And let's hope that when the uh, hot air unit is replaced, when the heater in there is new, then uh, I hope that everything will be fine again and I, I, that I can continue to work. All 
right? These hot air stations are um, becoming cheaper every year. If I remember correctly, I spent over 200 euros on this one and now you can get them for like 150 upwards. And uh, especially for this brand, which is Aoyui, I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, um, the support uh, in Germany is excellent. Um, if anything breaks or if you need new nozzles, you have them usually within two to four working days, um, which for for basically a uh, non-brand uh, soldering station from China, this is uh, pretty amazing. Well, let's see how to take this apart. This should come off easy. Uh, oh, but this won't. This won't. Okay, this is kind of odd. Um, I removed the shrink wrap here and uh, it appears that although this here is, uh, this thing here has, has pins that should actually fit the socket, it appears that this has also been soldered um, because I can't get it out and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get these out without without breaking something um, also um, the uh, the base here is broken uh, whoever put this together must have been in a real hurry It's a very nice thing, but it's extremely hard to repair like this. And it looks like... No, it doesn't. I thought there, there would have been the possibility to clamp down these cables here. Well, it's, I'm going to have to try and see if I can get these separated somehow. Alright, I was able to get it off. Um, but it will be a problem to get it back together because uh, um, it was actually soldered together um, and then this shrink wrap was uh, placed over it which basically means that it was um, soldered together before the whole unit was put together which is going to make it very hard um, to put isolation um, around this afterwards. Uh, these are the two um, heating elements. This is the old one, um, which has a lot of nitron wire, and uh, this here is the new one, which has a somewhat improved airflow, as it seems. Um, there's a uh, K-type sensor on the top of both of them. Uh, this one here is uh, not really in the airflow. Let's see how that works out. Uh, they're exactly the same length, and uh, I would say they have the same diameter. Um, possibly this one will have been better from the heating and this one will be better regarding the airflow. Um, I'm going to try to mount them. I'll, I'll be soldering them back together and uh, I'm going to have to see if all the uh, connections are long enough. Um, by the way, these uh, heating elements are 220 volts. They are rated for somewhere around 500 to 550 watts, which is quite a lot. Um, but if you want to do uh, reasonable um, soldering work, then you actually need that power. Um, ooh, those wires are really short here. Ooh. It's actually too short. 
Uh, probably need to do some. I'm gonna need to do something about that. Um, I'll figure something out and uh, come back then. Okay, I was able to somehow get it done. Uh, it looks like this now. Uh, I put a piece, two pieces of shrink uh, down here, two up here. Then I soldered the two ends together with a wire across. Made sure that the wire was securely attached to both ends of the cable. This is only the uh, the probe cable, so uh, um, there's no current going through there, but um, it shouldn't come loose because uh, you basically need a signal all the time, um, or the thing will simply not work correctly. Um, I put everything together, and I'm pretty happy the way it looks right now. Um, although it was a bit more work than I anticipated, because it seemed to be a drop in replacement. Um, I'll put it back together and uh, see if it works again. Okay, now here we go. Everything's back together again. Um, I just tested it and it seems to run fine. Um, let's turn it on. Uh, you can actually see that it's heating up okay. Uh, I took the... Let's see if we can see this. I took the other instrument and took a measurement of uh, what the temperature was and it looks to be fairly okay maybe a tad above what it should be but basically I would say it's working again which is fine, which is exactly what I needed. Let's check it. So actually the temperature is a bit higher than it should be. Um, which I guess is expected um, because the the K-type probe that was on there wasn't really touching uh, wasn't really touching the airflow, but um, but was touching the, uh, the ceramics. Mm. So I'll let it run in. It smells a bit, but that's probably because it's all new. I like it go up a bit. See how it handles higher temperatures. It's overshooting wildly. Uh, that wasn't so much a case with the old one. So I guess you always have to preheat for quite some time before you do reflow. Well, I'm not sure that this is an improvement. Well, it's working anyway. Right, we'll let it cool down and I'm going to put it back all the way together. and. Uh, Let's call the operation a success. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. Uh,